All right, so She-Hulk episode six. While this show is an absolute dumpster fire, I gotta say, with episode six, well, I didn't hate it. I actually think it was honestly one of the better episodes of the season. Now, this is one of those TV shows where obviously it's best to go ahead and turn off those funny little brain cells of yours and enjoy the comedy that She-Hulk and Marvel have to offer. And after not making an episode review of this show since episode one, I'm gladly here to tell you that's exactly what I've been doing, and honestly, it's kind of working. For all of the fan baiting and the trolling that Marvel Studios and its media shills have surrounding each and every episode, it's a true breath of fresh air to just watch a show where the characters are just one note, so I never have to expect anything new, has no stakes to get me on the edge of my seat, and a story that, well, leads to nowhere. A true mind-melting experience. Leading us to episode 6, which is funny because I've been seeing a lot of hate from this episode, even from some of the Marvel fanboys that love everything Marvel, so it's actually crazy to think that I genuinely enjoyed this episode. It was one of the first times that I actually felt like I was watching a normal show, and for all of the half-rementioned thoughts that I stated previously about the characters being one note and a show that has no stakes or direction, suddenly gave me a small dosage of what I believe the show could have been if we weren't in the societal plague that films and entertainment are facing today. The episode kicks off with Jen letting us know that we're in a self-contained She-Hulk episode, trolling all of the fans that are watching the show for the five minutes of Daredevil screen time, which I do want to say is kind of weird, but to each their own. With the two storylines being Jen reuniting with an old friend from high school when asked to be a bridesmaid, and Nikki and the newly introduced girl boss from the last episode, Mallory, taking on a fraud case from a man with the superpowers of immortality. Now, for the most part, contrary to what I said in episode one, I like Jen. Tatiana Maslany is a good actress with good charisma, and she really just has good screen presence. You can really tell that she's enjoying herself, so after the last couple episodes, I've really grown to like her character. She can be obnoxiously stupid and have cringe dialogue from time to time for sure, but that's mostly the writers just writing in their own ideals. When Jen is Jen, I like her a lot. This is the first episode where we kind of get to see Jen outside of her element, at a wedding with no friends or supporting characters to be alongside her. So watching her have a normal and flirty conversation with a good-looking groomsman at a wedding is refreshingly normal and appreciated compared to the cringe and over-political messaging that I'm used to ingesting. Watching Jen just get drunk to have a good time and have a drunk but realistic conversation with Titania of how the two are basically complete opposites and how in a way Jen is hypocritical about her She-Hulk persona and how that can affect other people actually had a brain cell of mine actually working again, which is appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> and the best part is that the show didn't stray too far because we immediately went back to the mind-numbing entertainment because we actually got a She-Hulk battle. Well... It was like 25 seconds, but it wasn't edited to complete chaos, so I actually got to see something happen, which was pretty cool. And while it's completely insane to say that Tatiana Maslany or Jennifer Walters in the show is struggling to attract men when she has an amazing career, she'll cook for you, she's absolutely stunning, and she's also the She-Hulk, is a pretty ridiculous amount of suspension of disbelief that the writers are telling me to have but I would have to say that this was easily my favorite Jen episode yet. When it comes to the other side of the table, I think this is where a lot of the hate of the episode is coming from, which in a way is understandable. It's easy to say that it's complete filler because it has nothing to do with Jen or the She-Hulk or whatever direction that this show is going in. But from a personal standpoint, which I know doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, especially here on YouTube, Nikki is my favorite character in the show. Easily the most grounded and realistic character in the show, even if she's built around a certain stereotype of woman in a corporate setting. So I enjoyed watching her be a character away from Jen. Even if people say that she was just doing the same thing, which she always does, like, yeah, of course she's doing the same thing. She's doing her job in the episode. From someone who enjoys her character, it was interesting to watch her dynamic change throughout the episode when it comes to how comfortable she is with Jen compared to Mallory not even sitting down at the seat across from her when discussing the case, to eventually becoming close enough for Mallory to share intimate details about her life and her family situation. It's the little things about the characters that you have to grasp onto when it comes to a show like this, because otherwise the overthinking about how shitty the writing and the direction is will overwhelm you with its stench. <laughs> so funny. While discussing earlier how absolutely insane it is that they made a man immortal just to use it as a gag, which I could probably say wouldn't even have been as funny without Derek Beller's acting. 
I would have to say that his first monologue, as well as some of his quick banter towards the end of the episode, did make us laugh a couple of times in real life. Rather, that's a bad thing or a good thing. Who knows? My point is, I didn't hate episode 6 at all. And while this show is an easy show to shed on, if you truly just turn off every single brain cell that you have and just watch the show as if it's like How I Met Your Mother or New Girl or even a show like The Office, you can find tiny aspects of the show that you can attach yourself to in order to make it a more enjoyable experience. For me, that's Jen and Nikki. I honestly think they're the only two positive aspects of the show, but I'm sure you'll be able to find some. Everyone is different. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to check out some of my other videos. Let me know how you guys are feeling about She-Hulk. Is it growing on you? Do you just hate it? We only have like two episodes left, maybe four. Who really knows? It's crazy how fast this show is going and yet nothing has really happened. It's truly astonishing. I'm watching the House of Dragons or House of the Dragon, whatever you want to call it, and Cyberpunk Edge Runners, so you can expect reviews on that coming soon. I'm finishing up some of the editing on my Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 2 review. I just watched Thor Love and Thunder for the first time since it came out on Disney+. Plus. I'm watching The Dahmer Show. I think I'm going to finish that up tonight. So, yeah. Expect a review on all of that type of stuff. My opinion might be a little different on that Thor Love and Thunder, though. Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. I'll see you in that next She-Hulk review. Bye.